Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun has made history as the first Nigerian finance minister to resign from office. Mrs. Adeoshun's three year in office has its own share of controversies. These range from initial competency and profile questions to the SEC's Guazos suspension from office and the yet to be proven allegation of educational certification forgery. Despite the initial or teething reservations about her, the finance minister's tenure was active in the administration of President Buhari that prides itself in public sector accountability, transparency, prudence, and anti-corruption. Mrs. Adilshin will be remembered for some key initiatives during her time in office. She sets up the efficiency unit, caught thousands of ghost workers off the government payroll, led the whistleblower program, while she pounds the streets, championing the tax amnesty exercise alongside the Inland Revenue Service. When you've paid your taxes, I assure you, people will vote. People will get the, the, the voter's card and make sure they vote. People will take an interest in who is running for Senate. People will take an interest in who is running for governor because they have personal stake in the monies that are being uh, managed. On Market Street, the former finance chief made invaluable contributions to the various multi-billion dollars euro bond offerings while leading Nigeria's discussions with multilateral institutions. Mrs. Adeoshu, Nigeria's second female minister of finance, is leaving behind quite a bit of issues which the incoming finance chief would have to deal with at a time when political considerations loom large over the economy and the financial markets. Temple Ashaju, Channel Television News. Welcome back. We've got uh, Ambassador Falake Marcos Bello. She is the former Nigerian ambassador to Malawi and Zambia. Thank you for coming on. Good to see you this Thank morning. Thank you. Good morning. Well, looking at the whole drama, the way it played out, did you see it ending this way? Well, it's got to end this way. There's no other way for it to end. Uh, I think it started about 71 days ago, and everybody was wondering when the bubble was going to burst. But when it comes to the issue of uh, crime, unfortunately, we have to face it. Um, a crime was committed, and I'm glad that uh, she, she resigned. But you know, when you say it had to end this way, uh, there are those who look at it in the context of what they think had happened before in this country where certain cases which they expect to end in a particular way and it doesn't end. So people thought, well, who knows? But well, we thought differently about this one. Because I know Kemi personally, and I know she's an honorable person, and I don't speak for her, but I suspect that she must have been waiting in the wings to resign. But for the position of a finance minister, some workings have to go on, you know. And um, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, at that level, you don't take, uh, it's going to affect the whole setup of government. So I suspect, I'm not speaking for government and I'm not speaking for her, but I suspect that a little time was taken to sort out a few issues. But be that as it may, for me, um, I think it is important that people get educated on what exactly has happened. The um, social media is agog with all sorts of stories, but we must not take away, because we have the young people watching us, we have other people watching us, we must not take away from the fact that what the law says must be looked at. So what does the law, what does the law say about this? Let's, uh, um, let first me of all, let let's, let's, maybe, maybe we should step <laughs> back a bit okay. and start from call to service, the yes. National Youth Service. Let's yes. begin from there. What does the law say about that? Well, let me tell you, um, youth service is a time of excitement. You know, it's like the university prepares you for semi-freedom. You have lectures, you have to go out. But youth call, we all look forward to it like freedom at last, away from home, away from anybody, a time to be yourself, you know. But there's a bit of confusion, and a lot of people don't seem to get it right. The law says if you graduate before 30, 
even 29 years, 11 months, and a couple of days to 30, you have to serve. There's no two way about it. It's very clear. Now, the confusion comes with people who graduated outside of this country mainly. They believe that once you come back after 30, you're excluded from youth call. Oh, no. Let us imagine a Mr. X graduates at 29 and stays abroad till he's 80. And he comes back here seeking to work anywhere, whether private or public or government sector, he will do youth call. There's no, you know, in I, I just want to make this clear because a lot of young people have asked, when something happens, is the lessons we take away from it that is important. It's not the political, the days. Some of us don't even have the facts we claim to have and what we're talking about. But this is important, it's the lesson. Kemi is a friend, she's a fantastic person, she's done well for this country. She's brought up a lot of issues, a lot of rumors are going on, oh, it's because she did this and she did, no. It's unfortunate, it is unfortunate. And <laughs> I'm sure that now that this has happened, a lot of us are going back to look at our certificates, driver's licenses, baptismal certificates, international passports, all sorts of things. Okay, so. Going by that, by what yes. you said, the law says if you graduate before 30, yes. no matter where you are, as far as you come back and want to serve in any capacity, you have to serve. Not just to serve, to work. To have to work. In any capacity. All right, so. And it's a criminal offense if someone employs you without that certificate. It is a criminal offense. Just add that. Okay. So <laughs> now you come in, if I remember correctly, the law also says you present yourself. Yes. Not that you're waiting to be called. You present yourself to be deployed. Isn't that yes. what it's supposed to be? That's why they open their portal. How is NYSC going to know everybody that graduates from all the corners of this world? Okay. It's a call to service. And it is taken seriously. And the law is clear. Sitting here, we also have children. Children, nephews and nieces. Who wants to dodge youth call? But the best thing is to sit them down to say, look, it's another year of your life. You're not going to die, Selvin. But Mrs. Adioshun, if I do remember her statement or her response was yes. that she applied for exemption. She can't. Okay, so she erred in that. She, no, she can apply in ignorance, which means she didn't know. And so you go to youth court office to say, here I am, I'm 48, 47 and I'd like to um, apply. You're right, you have a right to apply. Mm. But she said she was told that she's exempt. And from By that- By who? Well. Do you know, unfortunately, the law is an ass. Unfortunately, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Unfortunately, 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 we are pained. Women of this country were pained, were terribly pained that this has happened. But the truth must be told, and we have to face it. Can this be interpreted as sorry, sorry to it, Can this be interpreted as uh, a genuine error? Yes, yes, and yes. You see, um, if you are not careful, there are lots of things going on, especially with returnees and young people. They need a lot of mentoring. They need a lot of being spoken to. And right now, this has started, it's going to gather a lot of storm. A lot of things are going to start happening. Nigerians are becoming more aware. So anything you need to do, you need to check it out critically. You don't send your suitcase to the airport to be checked in. Anything can happen. You don't wait. I am optimistic that this system is going to correct itself. But if you were not her, because you said you know her, yes. if she were not the person, could this have happened? In terms of resi oh, I'm resignation? Sure there's several, I'm sure there's several fake certificates of all sorts going around in the country. It's not a question of being... You see, he who comes to equity must come with exceedingly clean hands. Hmm. Abroad has got to be clean. Here it's got to be sparkling. Because she's done things that other people have not dared to do. Okay, if we could backtrack a bit, and yes. I hope I don't take away from your train of thought. <laughs> you know, looking through this, 
Mm. This is not the first public office that she's occupied. Yeah. She was in Open State. She presented it to the State House of Assembly. We believe DSS. They've got this process. Uh, they clear people with that process. You've also perhaps have gone through that process. Yes. How does that work? Because now there are big question marks concerning the functions and activities of the DSS in clearing persons, concerning security reports. Even the State House of Assembly. Do they all just rubber stamp if they want you to go through, or is it that if you're a person of interest, they say, okay, then that's when they look really closely in at your words, documents? In other words, um, how much of screening goes No, on? I think it's the carelessness of us all. Oh. The carelessness of the average Nigerian. We're very careless people. We take things for granted. Um, I won't, I'm not going to take it away from the doorstep of Ogun State House of Assembly, where she served as a commissioner. You know, I also served. And I'm not going to take it away from the doorstep of the DSS, but we make a lot of assumptions. We're very careless people. We make a lot of assumptions. I don't speak for anybody here, but it could have been a genuine error. You know, now I come here and I tell you, oh, I graduated from the University of Ibado, and I bring your youth, source, youth course certificate. Until this has happened, you are not likely to concentrate on my youth course certificate. You are not even likely, if you need to do a thorough check, to want to write the youth call. And they are not the authority in vetting this certificate. They probably had a checklist. Degree, fam, youth call, fam. Yeah, but, but some persons in NYC uh, tell us that, well, some, sometimes mm. the military and some <coughs> other agencies, when they are not sure, they check with them which is the right thing to do. You check with the NYC saying, look, could you help us confirm whether or not these documents are what they appear to be? I don't take that away from you. I've just said it's the assumption and the carelessness. Now all of us will learn to be careful. Some of us, when we are over careful, they give us names, you know, uh, Efiko and all of that. But now this is the reality. You've got to watch it, you've got to check because one little mistake, one little assumption, can destroy everything you've done. And you know, uh, that, you know, sheds, uh, throws the spotlight on a wider problem, which is part of what you're talking mm -hmm. about, because we don't go back to do that extra check. Yes. Uh, even private companies, government, as we've seen now with the Gunsetas of Assembly, some say even the National Assembly knew about this for a bit and then didn't speak up on the matter. So this speaks to a systemic problem, doesn't mm. it? It does. It does. And um, that's why I'm, I hope this is a clarion call for everybody to go and recheck what they're carrying around. And also <laughs> for them, for the young people to know that you can't break the law. You may bend it, but it catches up with you. It catches up. So what, are we expecting some kind of persecution? Well, unfortunately, that should be the case. But of course... There could be presidential pardon. But if there's going to be some 